Good evening. I'm John Brunt, pastor of the Edmonds Adventist Church, and it's time for our nightly church family update, where we take prayer requests, read a scripture, and have prayer together, and try to stay together spiritually and emotionally, even though we aren't able to meet on Sabbath morning physically, as we usually do. It has been an absolutely gorgeous day today. I hope you got out and enjoyed it a bit with, of course, proper social distancing. I went down to uh, the beach area. I stayed away from the very busy part of the beach because it looked to me as if it was so busy I couldn't do social distancing. Uh, but I did find a rather secluded spot where I got outside for a little bit today. And it was just a very beautiful day. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you have a uh, request, please email me at pastorjohn at edmundsadventist.org. I'm not able to see the uh, comments you make while I'm on, though I always look at them afterwards. But uh, for future uh, requests, it's the email pastorjohn at edmundsadventist.org. We've been praying for Bonnie Parle's friend's mother. Her friend's name is Noni, and Noni's mother, you remember, had surgery for cancer, has been waiting the results of the biopsy and uh, the, tech, the uh, lab work to see about the cancer. They have discovered now that it was a very aggressive cancer. They think they got it all, but it was so aggressive that they are afraid that without further treatment, they might have left just a little bit and it could come back. And so she wasn't scheduled to go for her post-op until the 29th of this month, but instead they're going to have her come in this coming Monday. And it looks as if she will go through chemotherapy and radiation. So we wanna pray for her, pray that they really did get it all and that if not, these treatments will keep it from any kind of recurrence. I want to remember Muriel and Taya, both of whom we've been praying for uh, work as in their quest to find a job. And both of them are still looking, so we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, we want to remember uh, Hylene's roommate who is stuck in Kenya trying to get home. And in the last two nights, I've read updates on uh, Daryl and Terry's friend Marlene and also on uh, Mary's brother-in-law, Ray. And uh, since usually more people are on on Friday evening than on the other evenings, I thought I would repeat those. So let me read, first of all, um, what Marlene, who's a member of Daryl and Terry's uh, small group, says, hello, asking for prayer. Recovery, you remember that she had uh, heart surgery recently. Recovery does not seem to be a once and done thing, or as I would like it. My heart is a stubborn thing, both spiritually and physically. It is back in atrial fibrillation, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, which has made me very short of breath. The doc said he expected this, and it doesn't mean the procedure failed. I have a wounded heart and it has to heal along with my heart being irritable from the procedure. I have been, I've been started on another medication and the doc has a plan. I am trying not to be discouraged in trust, asking for prayer for both my hearts. Thank you for walking this journey with me, Marlene. And then here is an update from Mary about her brother-in-law, Ray, who you remember has had an infection in his foot. He has already had one leg amputated and had an infection and the infection has gotten better, but there is still more to pray for. Uh, here is the update that I got from Mary. Ray is still in Sunshine Health and Rehab in Spokane Valley. He can no longer read cursive because of having Alzheimer's disease. When anyone sends a card, they have to remind him who they are since their names are no longer remembered. It is even better if a photo can be sent with the card. Funny simple cards are best to help him smile. His infection is still done in the right foot. 
He still is under quarantine for at least another week. He's being fitted for a custom brace for the left leg from the amputation of his left leg from just below the knee. He does love God. God bless you all. So please continue to remember Ray. We also want to continue to remember Bill Davenport, who is having work on his uh, eyes. And we pray that that will go well and he will have full vision when these treatments are over. We uh, have several children we've been praying for. And I hope you will continue to remember them. The Josiah family's friend who have a, a young boy who was in a terrible accident with lots of trauma and brain stem injury. Uh, Huxley, the one who uh, is having respiratory problems. Uh, a friend of uh, Eileen McCoy. Um, Chuck's late brother's great grandson who's suffering from cancer, uh, a young boy over in India who uh, has a brain tumor. So hard to think of these children suffering. And I don't know if you've heard news today, but there are several children now who are suffering from a disease that seems to be related to the COVID-19 and seems to come from it and is now affecting little children. We thought that children were immune from this, but this seems to be a very severe illness that is now affecting children as well. So let's pray for the children tonight. Please remember that the Pathfinders are doing the uh, fundraiser of cookie dough if you have not already sent in your survey that they've sent out to all those who ordered cookie dough to see how you want it delivered, where and when you want it delivered, um, please do send that in. You should have received an email. The passage of scripture that I'm going to read tonight is again from Peter. Uh, we've been reading all week scripture readings from 1 Peter. And this is from the last chapter of First Peter, chapter 5. And it actually is directed toward the elders of the church. But it certainly has application to everyone as well. And so let me read what Peter says to the elders. And as I say, since we are all ministers, since we saw in the passage we read a couple nights ago in Peter 2 that we believe in the priesthood of all believers, that we are all a royal priesthood, why certainly it applies to all of us. Peter says, this is chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. In all of us, in our ministries in the church, that should be our goal, shouldn't it? To genuinely care about other people, to do it not because we have to, but because we love God and want to serve his children, uh, to do it without trying to get some kind of dishonest gain from it. Peter goes on, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Now, in the New Testament, there are two different kinds of crowns. There's the diadem, that's the royal crown that kings wear. And there's the stephanos, in which we get the word, the, the name Stephen. And the stephanos was uh, not worn by kings, but it was the crown of wreaths, usually laurel wreaths, placed on the head of those who won in the athletic contests. And of course, if the crown is made of laurel leaves, it doesn't last very long. But Peter says, you will receive a Stephanos, one of these victory wreaths, that is never going to fade away. In the same way you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. 
all of you, and so now this isn't just to the leaders of the church, it is to all of us. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. That's a wonderful promise, isn't it? We humble ourselves before God, and at the right time, he will lift us up. We don't know when that will be, but God will have us in his care, and at the right time, will lift us up. And he says, we can then cast all our anxiety on him because he cares for us. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful that you care for us. We feel that care, and yet sometimes when we face difficulties, it is hard to trust, hard to know that we are in your care. But we pray, Lord, that you will make your presence real to us and that we may know that we truly are in your care and we can cast our anxiety on you. We come to the beginning of a Sabbath. It's always wonderful to enter into that atmosphere of rest and refreshment that you gave us by hallowing the seventh day. And Lord, we pray that over this day, we will come to know you better and feel your presence more vividly. We pray for those that we've mentioned tonight. We think of these children, five children that we've mentioned, be with each one of them. Be with this young man who's over in Kenya, trying to get back to America. We pray that somehow you will open the way for him. We pray for Noni's mother as she now will start chemotherapy and radiation. We pray that that will be completely successful. We pray for Bill as he undergoes the treatment on his eyes. So Lord, we leave all of these and so many others that we've mentioned over the last number of nights in your care and keeping, in confidence that we can cast our cares on you, we can put our anxiety on you because you care for us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be sure and join us tomorrow morning. Remember, Sabbath school will be at 9 instead of 10 tomorrow morning, although you can watch it at 10 because it'll be saved on this Facebook page. And then at 11 o'clock, we'll have a worship service with a children's story and sermon. And be sure after the worship service to go to the posts on our Facebook page and see the medley of praise songs that Wendy puts together for us each week that you can sing along with and enjoy a time of praise and singing. And then tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, Sophia will be on with another hymn fest vespers. Tomorrow we will take a break from our series of six sermons on the book of Job. We have two down and four more to go, but we're going to take a break from that tomorrow and focus on our mothers instead with a sermon just for Mother's Day. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a blessed Sabbath and good night.